Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us at St. John this morning. Uh, whether you're here for the very first time or St. John is your home, we welcome you and we hope that you enjoy the next hour with us. Uh, it is appropriate today that we celebrate our community as a body of Christ. So I invite you to stand and body or spirit as we sing How Good It Is. Oh, how good it is when the family of God dwells together in spirit, in faith and unity, where the bonds of peace, of acceptance and love are the fruit of His presence here among us. So with one voice we'll sing dwells in the presence of his people. Oh, how good it is on this journey we share to rejoice with the happy and weep with those who mourn for the weak by strength. The afflicted find grace when we offer the blessing of belonging. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord, and with one heart we'll live out His word to the whole earth sees. The Redeemer has come, for He dwells in the presence of His people. Oh, how good it is to embrace His command, to prefer one another, forgive as He forgives. When we live as one, we all share in the love of the Son with the Father and the Spirit. So with one voice, with To the whole earth sees The Redeemer has come For He dwells in the presence Of His people Good morning, St. John. Please be seated. My name is Andy. I'm one of the pastors here, and it is my joy and privilege to welcome you on this Pride Sunday as we kick off Pride Week here in Anchorage. A couple of uh, brief announcements for you for the life of the community. Next week, St. John will be marching in the Pride Parade, and you are invited to join with us in marching if you so choose. We're going to meet between F and 9th, or on the corner of F and 9th, I should say, at 10... 30 on June 24th. So if you want to be with us, F and 9th at 10.30. Also tonight, we are going to once again host Mad Camp. Birchwood Camp, which is our church camp out in Chugiak, has been having music and drama camp all week, and they're going to do their final performance here in the sanctuary at 6.30 tonight. So you are welcome to come and join us for that great event. Also next Sunday, there's a family hike scheduled uh, they're going to meet at 2 p.m. the back parking lot at Powerline Pass if you and your family would like to go hiking with others from church. And then July 7th through 9th is our annual family camp out out at Eklutna Lake. We, we reserve the big group camp website. A website? Campsite. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to stop talking now. <laughs> Talk to Summer Cutting if you'd like to go camping. 
invite you to stand, take a moment, greet one another, welcome one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Let each other know you are loved. You are loved. Thank you. Thank you. You are loved. Happy Father's Day. Yes, that is the day. <laughs> I hate to break this up, but we've got another couple songs to sing. If you'll make, wake, make your way back to your seats, we'll sing All the People Said Amen. And we want to give a shout out to all you dads here today. We know you work really hard for your families and we are all thankful for you. One, two, three, four. Lonely when you feel afraid, you're not the only. We are all the same in need of mercy to be forgiven and be free. It's all you got to lean on, but thank God it's all you need. And all the people said, Amen. Oh, and all the people said, Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for His love never ends. And all the people said, Amen. If you're rich or poor, well, it don't matter. Weak or strong, you know love is what we're after. We're all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall. He so loved the world, He sent His Son to save us all. And all the people said, Amen. Whoa, and all the people said, Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for His love never ends. And all the people said, Amen. Blessed are, blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart. Blessed are the persecuted. Blessed are the people hungry for another star For this is the kingdom, the kingdom of God And all the people said amen Whoa, and all the people said amen Give thanks to the Lord for His love never ends And all the people said amen People said amen. Oh, and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. You are invited to have a seat. This next song acknowledges the fact that our community and us as people are not always perfect and often very far from that but if we are open to god's leading he will make it beautiful Oh 
garden come up from this ground at all. You make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of a dust. You make beautiful things, you make Beautiful things out of us. All around, hope is springing up from this old ground. Out of chaos, life is being found. creation who created us to care and to give and to love we come to you today seeking your strength and hope and to deepen our relationship with you God we thank you for your limitless grace that you freely give us and for the ways that you teach us what it means to follow Jesus even when we don't quite apply your lessons right away God, we come collectively to you today from the various seasons in front of us now. We come to you because we know that you walk with us through them all. Be with us, God, as we pray for our family, for the relationships that we were born into, as well as our chosen families, the ones who love and care and support us each and every day. 
May we grow closer and love each other deeper. God, we pray for those facing difficult times. Be with the sick, the healing, the grieving, those who are hungry, and those in times of transition. May you be a source of comfort, and may we reach out to them as an extension of your healing hands. We pray for this world. Our world that we live in is clearly experiencing deep trauma and deep division. Yet somehow, God, you still continue to show up and work despite the ways that we forget to listen to you and to our neighbor. Remind us constantly that black and brown lives matter. Help us to remember that you have called us to justice as a means of loving our neighbor and making your world a more inclusive and sacred home for all people. Lastly, help each and every one of us. Help us when we forget what it means to find rest, to ask for help, and to seek joy. We pray that you don't let us forget that we were created in your image and that loving you also means loving ourselves well. God, thank you for the warmth of the sunshine and the refreshment of the rain. Thank you for guiding us to the destination you call us to and for letting us choose our own routes. Thank you for loving us, all of us. Thank you for giving us permission, for encouraging us, and even forcing us sometimes to be our true selves unapologetically and proudly. For we know that you have created us fully, uniquely beautiful and without mistake. Guide us as we practice this kind of acceptance in our lives, knowing that it is for this very reason that you made us to be with one another in a community, to support and listen and encourage one another. In the spirit of togetherness and the spirit of family, let us all pray the prayer together that your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. I would love to invite the family of Baby Faith to come forward. Baby Faith, who is not so babyish anymore as she comes running up front. <laughs> if this little girl and her smile has ever brought you and your family joy, please say amen. Please come on up. So this past week had the very distinct honor and blessing of being present with many of you at the final adoption hearing for Baby Faith. And when Justin and Ryan approached me uh, maybe a month or so ago when they got the final date and they said, we really want to have her baptized on the very first Sunday that we can after her adoption, but that's Father's Day. Is that okay? <laughs> And my response, of course, was, are you kidding? She's got two dads. What better day to do this? <laughs> so I've got a few questions to ask of you all. <laughs> Historical, traditional questions that we always ask. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift without price. So on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, let me hear you say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? 
Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? As a member of St. John, will you faithfully participate in the ministries of this congregation by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Okay, friends, it's your turn. You are not just spectators here. You are full participants in this sacrament of baptism. So do you, as Christ's body of the church, also reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, let me hear it. We do. Nice. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include faith now before you in your care? A little longer response. With God's help, We will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround faith with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for faith that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. All right, sweetie. Are you going to come to me? Maybe? <laughs> this little girl reaches out for everybody else in the world. Can you come see me? I want to show you the water. Yes. Oh, hi there. Can you put your hand in there? Do you feel that? Okay. Are you ready? I'm going to hold you like this. Oh, ha, <laughs> I promise I won't drop you in. Okay, are you ready? What name do you give this child? Faith. Um, Faith Patricia Isabella Henny. Faith Patricia Isabella Henny. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and one more. of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Big smile. I invite you all to place a hand upon her. Faith Patricia, having been born through water and the Spirit, may you be a faithful disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Amen. Amen. Shall we take a little walk and say hi to everybody? Because I think... Everybody wants to see you. Ready? Can we go this way? Make Dad walk with us. My friends, this is our newest sister in Christ, Faith. We just now made our promises to raise her in the faith. We promised that we would support her and love her and care for her and her family in every way necessary. And so, a couple of things that that means for us is when Miss Erin or Miss Robbie come knocking on your door and say, you'd be a really great Sunday school teacher or (laughs) youth group leader, remember... You made a promise to help support baby Faith in her discipleship, to raise her. And as we all well know, raising a family can be a very difficult chore sometimes, a very rewarding one. And so we have promised to support their entire family with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And so, members of the household of God, I commend faith to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, 
and perfect her in love. Will you join together? We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian's love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Friends, will you join me in welcoming <laughs> our newest sister? This is a gift from Mindy Mine, who is uh, one of our members who attends the 9 a.m. service, and she does fuse glass art. And so this is a gift for you and your family to remind you that you are loved and that you will always have family here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Kip, are you ready? Yes. Kip has been worshiping with us for a few weeks now, and he told me he wants to be blessed as well. He wants to consider St. John his family and his home. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Ha Kip, have you been baptized elsewhere before? No. I you haven't. haven't. Have you been baptized anywhere before? No. No. Then let me ask you the same questions. Patrick, can I get you to scroll back to the beginning of the questions, and I'll just ask the, the beginning of the questions. We won't have to go through the whole thing. Is it okay if I don't pick you up to do this? <laughs> I don't care. Carry, carry. Okay, good. All right, Kip, take a look out here at everybody. Go ahead to the next one where it begins the questions. Excellent. Thank you, Patrick. You ready? Yes. Okay, take a look around. These are your brothers and sisters. So I ask you, on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and as serve as Christ's representative in the world? Excellent. As a member of St. John, will you faithfully participate in the ministries of this congregation with your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness? Yes, I do. And friends, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm your rejection of sin, your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Kip now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Kip with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for Kip that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. All right, are you ready? Do you want to set those on the communion table so they stay nice and dry? Because I promise you, you are going to get wet. Yes. Are you ready? I'm not my shirt. Oh, it's probably going to get a little wet. I'll do this. How's that? Yes. Yes? All right. Are you ready? <laughs> it's a lot of water. Kip, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. One more, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kip, having been born through water and the Spirit, 
May you be blessed by the Holy Spirit so that you may walk as a disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Amen. <laughs> Friends, let us welcome our newest brother in Christ. <laughs> welcome and God bless you. Children next, is that right? Excellent, Miss Erin. We're gonna just do the one song again. Excellent. Hi, I'm Miss Erin, and I'm hoping not to slip. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have the joy of working with families at St. John, and part of that was having over 100 kids at VBS this week. Woohoo! <laughs> We learned that we were all God's heroes, and they want to share a song with you. So if all of the kids, you don't have to have participated in VBS or day camp to come up. All of the kids can come up, and we will share a song with you called Hear Us As We Pray. And our leaders, Miss Hannah, Miss Courtney, and Mr. Austin are going to help us with that. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> to entering third graders. You're welcome to join us with children's worship. If you are in fourth, fifth, or sixth grade, or any age, you are always welcome to stay in worship. Thank you.
Hi, Patrick. Our scripture lesson today comes from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, beginning at verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. Now these are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is in it, who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. And when they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of me and my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to step out of my pulpit this week and give it to somebody else. Our sister, Megan, and her spouse, Desiree, have been with us at St. John for about two years. Megan, in a former life, served as an active duty chaplain in the army. She is an ordained pastor 
in the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee. That matters, believe it or not, the, the last two part of that. And she has been a phenomenal part of our family here at St. John, and she is going to be bringing the good news. So will you join with me in welcoming Megan to the pulpit? Good morning. morning. He might not thank me in a minute, but that's okay. (laughs) How many of you grew up in denominations other than United Methodist? Okay, so most of us. Anybody grow up on the more Pentecostal side, charismatic side? Awesome, all three of us are going to get this. Um, (laughs) It's fantastic. So I was ordained by the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee, Um, and we used to have what was called camp meeting. So imagine we're in Tennessee, it's the Bible Belt, Southern, you know, got good accents going on, and we would have camp meeting, and it's this week-long revival, and you get the preachers up there, and they're preaching their heart out, and uh, there's one particular instance, this rather plump man, probably about 70, um, had a few strands of hair, he was hanging on, he was hanging on, and had a ruddy complexion, and he was up there, and he was preaching his heart out. And I don't know what it is about us Pentecostals, but sometimes we feel like we have to say things more than once, you know, to make some emphasis. And so he's up there preaching, and he says, I don't know about you, but I've got hope in my soul, and it burns like fire. I said, I got hope in my soul, and it burns like fire. I said, I've got soap in my hole, and it burns like fire. a lot of information. (laughs) It's it's, it's easy sometimes to make those subtle mistakes when we lose focus, isn't it? Um, I'll tell my wife real quick, uh, Dolly Parton happens to be pretty big in Tennessee, and so she saw Dolly Parton come on TV and called her Polly Darton. Um, (laughs) And I'll tell her myself too, she makes fun of me because when I was trying to say Girdwood, I called it Girdword. So now anytime we go anywhere, it's Girdword. But those little innocent slips are so easy. And they happen in our spiritual lives too, where sometimes we make these little slips and we exchange our hope for soap. And we'll talk about that. So in this particular passage of scripture that Pastor Andy just read, We see that it's Jesus refocusing the disciples on an interesting aspect. He says, hey, the laborers are few and the harvest is plentiful. And I'm sure the disciples at some point are like scratching their head like, what is this guy talking about? I'm sure they live their lives like that. What is this guy talking about? Because he's constantly taking what's in the foreground and shifting it to the background and bringing that which they were missing and bringing it to the foreground. He's constantly shifting focus. And so he's saying, there's not any laborers, but there were plenty of teachers because that's what they were doing. They were traveling from town to town, from synagogue to synagogue. And maybe we think in our minds synagogue like this massive place in a big town. But back then, a synagogue was any place where there were 10 people, they would turn their home into this synagogue. And so Jesus was going into these places and preaching, and there's plenty of teachers who were leading those places. So imagine Jesus saying, there's not enough laborers. And they're like, but we've just been with all these teachers. But he's making a distinction. There's something very different about a teacher and a laborer or a teacher and a shepherd, and he compares that laborer to a shepherd. And so we'll see, why did he say this, first of all? Why did he say, hey, there's this need? He said it because as these large crowds are following Jesus, they're being harassed, and people are mocking them and making fun of them and giving them trouble. And so my question immediately is like, well, who who are the bullies? Who are they? And this particular text doesn't specify who they are, but based on other scripture, it's probably pretty clear to say that the antagonists were probably the religious elite, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the people who said, who is this Jesus guy? 
You know, who is this guy who thinks that he can bring this ragtag muffin of these crazy, unworthy people to follow him around and heal them and minister to them? And he's not who he says he is. He's just some freak. And so they're sitting there harassing the crowds and saying, "Uh, uh, uh-uh, you guys, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. And the thing that's interesting about this is that Jesus looks at the crowd, he sees this happening, and he is instantly filled with compassion. In the scripture, when you look at the Greek, the word for compassion there is actually compassion so deep that he felt it in his bowels. That's deep. If you're feeling that, have you ever had your stomach in knots because something has troubled your soul so much? We're talking that's the kind of crazy love that Jesus had for this ragtag muffin crew of people following him around that he literally felt his stomach in knots and said, this isn't right. This is not right the way that they are being treated. We have to do something. The laborers are few. Who's going to rise up? Who's going to stand up? Who's going to say something and do something on their behalf? They need a shepherd. They need somebody who's going to stand up and defend them and protect them. You see, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they're the religious elite of the day. They're the ones who for thousands of years, they've been waiting on the Messiah. They are the ones who were following the law, or so they thought. They were following the law, and they were teaching others how to follow the law. And so when Jesus came along, here they had been waiting on the Messiah, and they're waiting on a king. And instead, they got a carpenter. But that's the way that Jesus shows up sometimes, right? We want to see Jesus in a particular way, but he shifts the focus. He wasn't who they thought he was going to be. He didn't look like them. He didn't act like them. He included people that they excluded. And I would challenge us that there's times in our lives when, when God is always loving the people we love and against the people we're against, that maybe we too have had that little spiritual slip where we've let something in our spiritual lives slip. Because you see what the Pharisees and the Sadducees at the time we're doing is they exchanged this hope of a promised Messiah who was going to come and deliver them and they picked up the soap and they said you're not clean enough you're not worthy enough you're not good enough and man they washed themselves real good to look real nice on the outside those whitewashed tombs but on the inside their hearts were cold and dead and judgment replaced hope And so Jesus is saying, where are the laborers? Where are the shepherds? And he commissions commissions his disciples to pray, to pray for a shepherd. And this verse is often used um, when we send people out to mission fields, when we send off missionaries. And that's a great verse. It is. Hey, go reap the harvest. But Jesus was looking at an immediate need and saying, this is the harvest right in front of you. Right here in your midst is the harvest. And I wonder how many times I've been stuck to something like this or a phone or a selfie. I don't really do selfies. (laughs) Often. Um, But I wonder how many times I miss the immediacy of the harvest right in front of me. But Jesus didn't. Jesus didn't. He shifts our focus. And so we see this role of the shepherd taking prominence throughout all of the scripture. And for me, I don't know about you, but I grew up in church where the shepherd was a nice white felt Jesus on a board. Any of you have felt board Jesuses? Or am I old? Okay. And and it was always, (laughs) thank you. Yes. And it was always about the shepherd um, leading, you know, like, I am the shepherd, and I'm leading my sheep, you know, and I've got my staff, and oh, if the sheep gets out of line, tap, 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 you're a bad sheep, bad sheep, bad sheep. <laughs> That's sort of like how I thought the shepherd 
was. And then I deployed to Iraq. And my very first deployment there, my office is on what we called Sniper Row because it was overlooking this hillside and green rolling pastures. And sometimes snipers would sit up on the hill and take shots at us. So Sniper Row. But anyway, so I go into my office and um, you know, occasionally there was some danger, but out into the fields there were shepherds, like literal shepherds with these sheep. And I was like, this is amazing. You know, this is so cool. They're not white, they're dirty sheep though. And man, he's not very clean and I got a new understanding when I had to do a critical incident debriefing when my soldiers came in because they were reacting to some contact and they had accidentally hit the sheep and his shepherd or the shepherd and some of his sheep. And they came back and they were traumatized. They didn't mean to, but obviously they were flying down the road. And all they kept saying were, chaplain, chaplain, this man had a compound fracture of his femur and all he was doing was laying there in the road crying for his sheep. Like he didn't care. We were trying to render aid to him and all he kept saying was, go get my sheep, my sheep. You see, it was his livelihood. There's a connection there. There is a living with these dirty animals. There is this job for him to protect the sheep. That's his whole purpose is at night when the enemy comes that he stays watch and he protects his sheep. And it's this amazing, beautiful imagery that Jesus is saying to these disciples, these people who are being harassed, people who are attacking them, they need people to rise up and to be their shepherds. And today we have some examples of that, like just modern, modern day examples. Um, the shooting that happened just a few days ago at the uh, congressional baseball game. You know that one of the Capitol Police officers, I think it's funny, um, not funny, haha, but ironic funny, is that one of the Capitol Police officers who risked her life was an African American, black, lesbian, female officer protecting a white, anti-same-sex marriage male congressman. Because you know what? Those nuances didn't matter. The humanity mattered. Placing ourselves between. One thing that made me feel safe in this church um, to come and worship was at the hearing stories of the Pride Parade last year and people harassing the crowds. I don't know if you heard about it, but getting harassed and people with megaphones shouting. And you know what some of the churches did? They went and they made a wall and they stood between. God wants us to stand between the marginalized and to stand up for them. And he's not asking us necessarily to be allies. That might be shocking to you. But you know what an ally is? An ally means that we have a common enemy. I think Jesus wants us to be brothers and sisters because we have a common father. When we shift the focus from what we agree is the enemy and we shift the focus to who is our brother and who is our sister, it is everyone, every single person. And when we start taking this beautiful gift of free grace and saying, you have to earn it, we've done that thing in our lives where we just slip so easy. We've exchanged our hope for soap. And I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of looking at other people and saying, man, you might not cut the mustard. I'm guilty, God, forgive me. But his grace is for everyone. Everyone. There's a beautiful scripture that I absolutely love, and it's in Romans chapter 8. Hang on. Technology. It's got me. Got me good. So Romans chapter 8. I think the focus in our lives sometimes as we, we, we take a look at our problems, we take a look at the enemies, we take a look and we try to fight through 
um, our words or political gains, but I think the only thing that's gonna make a difference in our life is when we place our hope in Christ Jesus. That is the difference. When we come together as brothers and sisters and we show our love to each and every other person, that is when change occurs. And if you're in this room and you haven't felt like you were okay where you're at, that God loves you where you're at, listen to this scripture. It's one of my favorite. Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Who's going to bully us, huh? Who's going to bully us? It is God who justifies. Who is there to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. And more than that, who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. <laughs> what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we're being killed all day long, and we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. There is nothing. You are not out of God's reach, and neither is the person that maybe you think is. There is nothing. When our hope is in Christ Jesus, when our hope is on that solid foundation, that is when we change hearts. That's when we change minds. Amen? Amen. So I know it's not really our custom to uh, applaud after a sermon. But... <laughs> So we get a chance to respond to God's word read and proclaimed. I'd like to invite the band to come up as I give us a few instructions about what comes next. Uh, we're going to enter a time of prayer, and this time is for you. You get to do whatever you want during this time. St. Augustine was known to have said, those who sing pray twice. So if you wish to sing through this time of prayer, you're invited to do that. We also have candle stands up here, three different places. And you are invited to come and to uh, light a candle in prayer for someone else or in prayer for a particular situation or, or to bring light into a dark spot. We have these great kneelers that many years ago women in our church labored over long and hard. And so come and kneel where many others have knelt before and pray. If you want to remember God's saving acts in your life, there's water in the baptismal font. You are welcome to come up, to dip your hand in the water, to make the sign of blessing for someone else, or even just to remember that God loves you and that nothing can separate you from that love. This prayer time is for you. Use it however you need to, to feel more closely within God's presence. Let us pray. Never gives up, never runs out on me. 
Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. And on and on and on and on it goes. It overwhelms and satisfies my soul. And I never ever have to be afraid. This one thing remains. One thing remains. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails. And Never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love, your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. Gracious and almighty God, we give you thanks for all the ways that you pour out your love upon us. Receive these gifts, these offerings, these prayers on behalf of others. And Lord God, receive us also into the arms of your mercy. Send us in your holy name. Amen. You're invited to stand as we pray for the Spirit of God to overflow in us this week and every day.
Out of this place today, may we remember to be those shepherds who protect those who are marginalized and vulnerable. May we, instead of focusing on our problems or how much further we have to come, may we shift our focus and focus on how big our God is. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you guys. I think Art and Marilyn are waiting out there in the triangle room to serve us. Is that right? Are you ready for us? Excellent. Come on out. Let's join together in some fellowship and